What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is John Hammond, and we are still in the Leviathan War Game from Over the Wire. Uh, we just got the password for level two, so now we can use our SSH pass command, passing the password just in some command substitution, using the most recent and most normal <laughs> uh, syntax for command substitution, dollar sign parentheses, making sure we're using the right user and the right port, now 2223. So once we connect... Um, we got our home directory, and there's a file called here in here called print file. So let's run this. Print file looks like it's a binary that will file printer, maybe just print out a file or, or, or show it on the screen. So give it a file name. Uh, how about etc. password? Because we know that that file exists all the time. Okay, and it just cats it out for it. It just it just prints it out. Um, can we use this to print out the password for the next level, for Le Leviathan level 3? Um, if you can see, it was displayed in red here, and that's kind of a symbol with LS colors to say that this is a set UID binary. That S here in the permissions is saying that this level, this file is owned by Leviathan level 3, or the user for Leviathan 3, when we are only Leviathan 2. So running this binary lets us borrow the temporary uh, privileges and permissions that Leviathan 3 has. So everything that this binary can do lets us elevate to Leviathan 3. So we got to exploit the program or figure out a way that we can take advantage of it and get the password for the next user, to get the password for Leviathan 3. So we ran LTrace in the previous video. Let's do that again now. But I do want to see... Um, what will happen if we can't read a file because will it let us just read the Leviathan um, password? Leviathan 3 it says, I can't have that file. Okay, whatever. Um, let's move on, I suppose. How is it, how is it, how does it figure out that I don't have permission that when clearly Leviathan 3 has permission to read that file. Um, let's check out what it's doing with Ltrace. Again, I'm just using Ltrace at the very start of the command and using the dot slash, so I execute the binary and let Ltrace monitor what it's doing. So it runs access, a library function that will check what kind of permissions does this user have on the... Um, file that it has passed to. It looks like it just used the Leviathan pass, Leviathan 3 file name that I gave it, and it realized I didn't have permission to read it, so it errored out. But it had no problem reading etc. password, so what happened here? Um, scroll up here, let this kind of read through. So this is where we left off. We didn't, we weren't able to read that one, but when I ran Leviathan 2 Ltrace uh, print file with its a password, it ran that same access function, checked that I can read that file, and then it ran printf, or sn printf. So, okay, it's copying some string to some buffer here. And I guess it's just using, okay, printf for the format specifier, so the percent %s, it copies in the file that I gave it, that argument that we passed, um, etc. password to the string binary cat or some bin cat just running the cat command and finally we're ending up with the string bin cat etc password but all it's doing is just putting our argument right in a system command it looks like it just runs this and executes this command down here and here is where we're running the get effective user id get effective user id and setting our uh, effective user id so this section only after we've determined whether or not we can access the file is where we are going to determine if we can read the file for you or let the program print it out for you. So we won't be able to elevate our privileges to be Leviathan 3 until we can get a file that we access. So, weird. Um, but maybe there's some command injection we can do here because our string is just getting through if we have a file we can access, and it's passing it right to system. So we can maybe have a command execution in this. Let's try something. Um, I'm going to make a temporary directory with make temp dac d, so we have a home to work in. I will copy this, so now we can create a file. Um, I'll just call this, I'm going to use touch to just name it. I'm going to call it fake, and we want to try and execute another command following this. So normally you could do that with a colon or a semicolon bash, so let's do that same thing and treat that as the file name so that the program, when it tries to run bin cat on 
Fake Bash. We will give the program Fake Bash as if it's a file name, but the program will evaluate this string as executing the cat command with fake as the argument and then evaluate the rest of this command to run bash as another separate command or process. So kind of a little bit of a hack, kind of a little bit of a, a, a tweak there. Let's try that. Um, make this file. Now if I just run touch fake semicolon bash like this, there'll be an issue, right? We can see we've created the fake command, but I'm just running bash in a new shell. If I were to exit out of this, I won't exit my connection because I was in another bash internal shell just, just then. We wanted to create that file, fake bash, with quotes around it, or a single quote, so that bash will interpret this literally. And it won't evaluate the semicolon and next command to literally mean a new command we want to run. We just want a file name with that peculiar name. So now when I run this, you can see fake semicolon bash. Now we can run print file with our string fake bash. So it will access the file. Oh, it's not letting me do that. Oh, let's see. It did kind of work. I mean, it did work, right? We're Leviathan 3 right now. But it tried to run cat on the fake file because, again, when we saw bin cat evaluate, it ran it for the file name fake because the semicolon preceded that and it looked like its own command. But we don't have a file name fake. So we ended up just running bash and now we are Leviathan level 3. You can see that in who am I. So I can just go ahead and cat out. Nope, not in bad anymore. Cat out Leviathan pass. Leviathan 3. And we've got the password. Cool, cool, neat hack. Exiting the shells because we were in a new one, right? Let's put this in Leviathan 3. And I think that's all I want to do for this video. Uh, it's getting a little bit long. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, and please, uh, if you had another idea or some other solution for solving some of this stuff, I am not the best source. You know, I say that... Uh, with a complete disclaimer and a complete warning and notice. Uh, yeah, I don't know all the answers. So, hey, if you've got some other alternative or better solution, please share them in the comments. Like the video, share it, do whatever you got to do. And uh, I'm grateful for it. So, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.